해볼까? 아니, 어, 뭐, 왜? 뮤트, 하, 언뮤트 해야지. 그, 소... 조나, I think we need a sound check. Uh, as wonderful as it is to see Jim's technique on the piano, it's uh, even better to be able to hear him as well. Do we want to try that again just to make sure the sound is going to be okay?
Welcome to our service of worship this morning on September the 13th, 2020, our virtual service. Um, I'd like to begin with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather as the congregation of Knox Church is the traditional Treaty 7 territory of the Nitsitapi, Blackfoot Confederacy, Kainai, Pikani, and Sitsika, Tusina, and Stony Nakota people, as well as the homeland of the Beatty Nation of Alberta, Region 3. With regards to the announcements, they can be found in your order of worship. The virtual cafe at Knox um, continues outside and um, hopefully the weather holds up for a long time yet to be able to do that. Uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel and if you want to be um, more connected with emails, etc., email office at knoxcalgary.ca. And finally, thank you for remembering Knox in your prayers and your donations. And you can email uh, donate at knoxcalgary.ca. You can go through snail mail or the website. There is an extra announcement that was on, on your email that came from Tiffany. And this is all very good news and exciting that we were the recipient of a 7,500 Calgary Foundation neighborhood grant, which will be used for outdoor projects. And Tiffany is looking for input as to how to um, use up that money and she's wanting, this is all, all outdoor projects, want input for outdoor projects. At, the, um, at 6 p.m. this coming Thursday, they'll be putting up, or will be putting up the, the beautiful mural. Um, I don't know if everyone's seen it, but it's a, a beautifully done tree by a local artist. And the, the leaves were done by members of the community at the gathering that we had on the 29th. And then at 7.30, there'll be a short brainstorming session for other outdoor projects that will be determined at that time. Um, make sure, I, I just looked at the weather forecast this morning, although it's looking good with no rain, it'll be a little chilly. So bring your own chair and a nice warm blanket, as well as a mask. We will now have our centering prayer. How great are your works, O Lord. 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 Your work makes me sing for joy. 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 In the call to worship, the bolded part, if you'd like to follow along and say it in your homes. Let us pray. Guide your steps when you go to the house of God. To draw near, to listen is better than to sacrifice office offered by fools. The Lord will hear the desire of the meek. The Lord will strengthen their hearts and incline his ear to do justice. Rise up, O Lord, lift up your hand. Do not forget the orphan 
and the oppressed. The Lord is King forever and ever. And we will now uh, sing our hymn number 691 found in your order of worship. Holy Lord, you are the God of the living, not the dead. For you, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, took from the burning bush about our ancestors and spoke of them as living with you. Truly, you are the God of the resurrection. Yours is the power revealed in your word by which the dead are raised to new life. And Christ Jesus, your son, is the head of your new creation. By your grace, you have given us the spirit of your risen son to dwell in our hearts, that we might die to sin and self and live together with Christ. Come, Lord, and receive our humble yet exultant testimony to your goodness. O oh God, holy and merciful, we confess that we often speak before we think, giving voice to pride, skepticism, and words of knowledge. Forgive us, Lord. Do not be angry at our words. Search our hearts and guide us into purity of thought, word and deed. Let Christ Jesus reign in each heart in the power of your Holy Spirit 
and in the sure promise of the resurrection. Amen. The celebration, oh, you're invited to follow along in the communion order as we begin the uh, celebration of the sacrament today. The celebration of what humanity can be is here. We are invited to celebrate the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus, to remember the life offered to us in Jesus. While the world may desire us to think that violence and selfishness are the only way, God sent Jesus to show us another way, a way of peace, of obedience to God's will, a way of love. Let us commemorate this day of celebration in joy. Come, gather, remember, as we take the time to make our personal space sacred space, fill your senses with the gifts of God. See, hear, smell, taste, and touch what has been prepared for you. On the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus assembled with his friends, disciples whom he chose to minister with him. He took the food that was prepared for them, bread and wine, and after giving thanks, he shared them with his friends, and he reminded them of their relationship to God and their responsibility to one another. So we take some bread or whatever you have prepared. symbolically we break it which shows our desire to share with one another and we will lift up the cup and we will share with each other as well and in this with fellowship and communion we are together with Christ these are the gifts of God let us take these and do the same now our song. Psalm 92, 5 to 11. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard cannot know the stupid cannot understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass and all evil doers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For your enemies, O Lord, for your enemies shall perish. All evil doers shall be scattered but you have raised my horn on high, like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, reading in chapter 3, verses 22 to 36. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time with them there and baptized. John also was baptizing at Eon near Salim because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, 
rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is on, of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's passage underlines one of the many important differences